Well, there you are. That barrier again! Looks like we were right. Another Therian. Just as Velvet conjectured, each of the seven heads seems to assume a different form. The sensation! It was here! Well, look at that. I guess your hunch panned out too, kiddo. This is just how I felt in Ward Forest. That must have been an Earth Pulse point back there too. Well, what are we going to do with this one? Can we get it to shrink like that bug of yours? I don't care whether it lives or dies. As long as we defeat it and take out one of Inominot's heads, that's all that matters. Try not to let it eat you! Gonna be very uncomfortable! I don't think this Therian's getting any smaller. <gasps> the demon again!
Is that Therian? Eating the demon? must refer to demons, then. Feeding on demons. I know what that's like. <laughs> Mommy. Mommy. Look! It turned into a little girl! Is that... Kamoana? Mommy, why? Why did you leave me all alone? <laughs> did I do something wrong? Was I too weak? I'm sorry, Mommy. I'm sorry. No. This can't be happening. I tried so hard to be strong for you, Mommy. The man from the Abbey made me strong. <laughs> so please, Mommy. <laughs> please come back. The Abbey made her strong? By turning her into a Therian? Jeez, those Abbey Jokers really get off on this sacrifice stuff, don't they? I can't believe it. That... that woman... She was trying to save her own daughter. <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> Mommy! I miss you. <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> Dying, unable to save her daughter, all she could do was offer herself to feed her hungry child. No, this... this is my fault! So... Should we bring her with us? Someone like her will only slow us down. That Therian isn't going anywhere! Oscar! What is the Abbey doing? Please tell me, I have to know! Eleanor! The less you know, the better! I must know! I killed her mother, and then the poor girl, she... Ah, so she must have devoured the demon. But don't let that trouble you. The demon was a necessary sacrifice to bring an end to this world's pain and suffering. It wasn't just some demon! She was a mother! She was all this girl had! Her one and only mother. Be that as it may, those who possess strong wings must... It's not nice to make a girl cry. <laughs> Mommy! Kamawana. It's now or never. Out of the way, Lafayette. set. Wait! Have you no compassion? This isn't up for discussion. I thought you just wanted to weaken Inominat! You can sever the link! You don't have to kill her! a change of heart. Apparently a woman's tears truly do have frightening power. I'm just curious about something Grimoire said. I can always kill this one later. If we're taking her with us, we'd better grab her and go. No sense lingering in the enemy's territory. Hey, Kamawana. 
My name's Lafayette. Do you want to come with me and my friends and get out of here? Where's my mommy? I'll be lonely without her. <laughs> you're not alone, sweetie. I promise. Even if she's far away, your mother will always be looking over you. How do you know? Because <laughs> that's what my mother does for me too. Let's go, Kamawana. Okay. Good. The malevolence is getting stronger. I my. The effects are already starting to show. Watch and I'll Huh! <laughs> 
all my power. What's up? Did you come to share something else you found in that book? Not quite. I'm afraid the malevolence has grown too dense for me to hole up at the inn reading. Malevolence? The hell? What's that coming out of their bodies? Malevolence. They're all hitting their limits. Demons now. Their malevolence is spilling over. The malevolence? All of that energy spilling from their bodies? That's what causes the demon blight? Do you know what demon blight really is? What demons are? They couldn't have gotten far! Track them down at all costs! We'll talk later. The exorcists are going to have their hands full with these demons. Let's get back to the ship while we can.
finish this quick. I need to be careful not to misuse my pep. Away. Then I need to wait for her at home. Let's go back to Haria. Scary demons are running through the village. It's too dangerous there now. But I want to see my mom. Your mom would be sad if you got hurt by a demon. Come with us, and we'll keep you safe until she comes back. Okay, I'll go with you. I wouldn't want mom to be sad. All right, you're going to tell me about the demon blight and malevolence. Are you seriously thinking of breaking the Moloch taboo? That depends. Moloch taboo? This is about more than just the demons. You could say it's the truth behind how this world really works. The knowledge can be devastating to humans, throwing into question everything they think they know. And so the Malachim agreed to withhold it from humans, for their own protection. Do you still want to know? It's not like I'm a human anymore. I can't keep lying to myself. I can't go on unless I know the truth. You asked for it. First of all, this thing, this illness you call Demon Blight, does not exist. Any human carries the potential of becoming a demon. All it takes is for the malevolence lurking in their heart to overflow. And what exactly is this malevolence? Impure emotions beyond what reason can suppress. Think of it as the sin buried in men's souls. So you knew. I'm a witch. So malevolence is the darkness in all our hearts. Make any sense to you guys? Any at all? When you put it like that, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. <sighs> by nature, humans are incited by negative energy. It is easy to turn them towards impurity, creating malevolence. In fact, most people are constantly generating malevolence. It might even be possible that demons are people's true selves, and what little reason they possess is all that keeps them in human form. If the masses realize this, the realm would be thrown into utter chaos. That's why the Abbey propagates the lie of demon blight. So I presume. That can't be true! You know yourselves there weren't any demons before the opening! 
It used to be that humans couldn't see demons or Malachim. Not unless they possessed a unique spiritual talent we call resonance. All your average human would see was someone turning extremely violent. Unable to explain what was happening, they'd just call those people possessed or feral. Then what made people see them all of a sudden? I don't know. My guess would be that something triggered greater resonance among all of humanity. And then, on the day of the advent, all humans gained the ability to perceive Malachim. And in the following days, the exorcist numbers swelled. This has to be Artorius's doing. But if there's no sickness, why would an entire village turn into demons at the same time? Eight-headed is the lord of the land, with seven mouths to devour malevolence. Humans produce malevolence, which Therians consume and transmit to a Nominot. But when we removed Kamawana from the Earth Pulse Point... Clever boy! That's right. With no Therian to absorb their malevolence, the villagers could no longer contain it. So you're saying it's all my fault? <sighs> hey, what's going on? You all look so sad. It's scaring me. On the other hand, at least now we know we can trust the contents of that ancient book. We tear the Therians away from their Earth Pulse points. Inominat's power will wane, and will prevent this awakening. But if we take away the Therians, then more and more humans will turn into demons. It's the only way to kill Artorius. Ooh, the knives come out! So even the truth won't stop you. Very well. Since each Therian looks different, we'll only find them by capturing the Earth Pulse points one by one. What separates humans and demons? Um... Uh... That's Eleanor. Ch cheer up, Eleanor. Your mommy's looking over you too, you know. So she is. Thank you, Kamoana. Grimoire, I want you to tell me more about what you said earlier. About malevolence? I told you, the subject is taboo. I understand that human emotions create a poison called malevolence that turns people into demons. Is there no way to stop malevolence from being created? As long as humans remain human, no. Malevolence is born of emotion, you see. But your kind must have found a way around it. Malakim experience emotions too. But Malakim do not produce malevolence, unlike humans. That's a lie. I've watched a Malak turn into a demon. That only happens when we are exposed to too much external malevolence. <laughs> True. The island was full of prisoners and demons. And Melchior hit that Moloch with something that turned it into a wyvern. Was it malevolence? To Moloch, malevolence is a powerful toxin. We seek those of purity to serve as vessels to protect us from it. It is not a perfect solution, however. If the vessel is corrupted, the Moloch is as well. That is correct. So if Eleanor turns into a demon, then Lafayette. That must be what Aizen meant when he said he'd hate to see Lafayette's vessel broken. A small crack in one's soul is often all it takes to break a person apart. So try not to pick on our squeaky clean exorcist too much, hmm? Thanks for the warning. Scout-
So I rescued this poacher who'd run away from one of those class four islands, right? She mentioned something about being hired by some chef to go hunt a rare wolf on the island. But she didn't see a single blasted critter on that island, let alone any rare wolf. Place was empty. Then why did she run away? Even though she never saw nothing, she kept hearing some beast howling round the island. Freaked her right out, I tell ya. When she got back to her boat, her food had been pilfered and her ship was scratched up to hell. She got out of there as quick as she could, but her ship sunk soon as she hit open water. Hmm. Sounds like whatever's there is as smart and manipulative as it is vicious. Sounds like. Later I heard some talk about how several exorcists had gotten killed on that island. If you plan on going, you'd best be very cautious. Sir, we just received a Sylph Jay from the boss of the Bloodwings. She has a job for us and wants us to meet her in Logris. How should we respond? Let's do it. Besides, we need to see if that demon in the villa was actually a Therian. Good point. And the Bloodwings might know something about the other Therians, too. We're heading for Logris. Prepare to set sail. Ready anytime! I lost my mother to a demon. Yet that girl's a Therian. I... I don't even know what I want anymore. Hey! That's pretty! You like to look at that thing, don't you? Yes. My mother... Someone very important to me gave me this. I treasure it a lot. Looking at it gives me strength. Do you want to see it? Yeah! Ah! What's wrong? My face! It's... it's scary! Uh, I don't want to look like that! I don't want my mommy to hate me! Mommy! <laughs> Mommy! When I was her age, that's just how I cried. Come on, I want you to see this. That huge owie! What happened? It's big and ugly, isn't it? There are scary things about my body, too. But... Do you think I'm scary, Kamoana? No, not at all. But are you all right? Does that hurt? Thanks, sweetie. I'm all right, I promise. What about me? Do you think I'm scary? You're such a sweetheart, Kamoana. Nobody could ever be scared of you. Not me, not your mother, not Lafisette. You don't have to cry anymore. It'll be okay. I promise. <laughs> okay. That scar. Was it from a demon? Yeah. They attacked my village when I was a girl. I was so hurt, I couldn't move. But my mother lured them away from me so I could survive. What happened to her? The last thing she said to me was, Stay strong and keep living. Oh. Come to the deck. Grimoire says she's learned something from the book. Hey, why is your face so red? It's nothing. Somehow I doubt that. It's nothing, I, I swear. Do you all remember the second verse of that song Lafisette read earlier? Four Empyreans may tear him asunder, 
but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, therein shall be forever reborn in sight of the full crimson moon. Right. That's what I've gathered you all here to discuss. And we think that passage means that Inomi Notch and the Therians will be revived by a chosen one, right? Yes, but the shall be forever reborn part kept bothering me. I've reconsidered my analysis. Suppose that instead of someone being chosen by Inomi Not to create Therians, the song means that Inomi Not chooses who becomes Therians. <sighs> but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn. What do you think that could mean? That someone receptive to Inominat's power will be reborn as a Therian. Like Kamoana! Which is to say that the Abbey figured out how to turn people into Therians, and then got right to work. That's... Are you really that surprised? Artorius has always been one to prioritize the many over the individual, as I well know. Another thing to consider is this wording about Therians being forever reborn. This could mean that one Therian will be reborn again and again. Or it could mean that different Therians will be born to take their place. Meaning that even if you kill one, there are more waiting in line. They can't be wiped out. Looks like prioritizing the one over the many was the right call this time, eh, Velvet? I never said I wouldn't kill her, if it would prevent Inominat's reawakening. But Therians can't be killed. Not truly. Hmm... So, in a nutshell, if you kill one, another person who's receptive to Inominat's power will be reborn as one. Right. But the song says that seven mouths feed the body. So there's only so many around. If you don't kill them, the next ones won't be born. Exactly. So we remove the seven Therians from their Earth Pulse points instead. But then, we also have to protect them so the Abbey doesn't steal them back. Or kill them. Sounds tricky. We've got to protect my bug, too. Yeah. You take real good care of that thing now. Got it? You bet I will! In that case, we should probably work on securing a proper hideout for ourselves. You got a secret base or anything, Aizen? It's every man's fantasy, but sadly, I don't. We need a hard-to-find spot. One where we can guarantee a steady supply of malevolence for the Therians. Hmm, somewhere devoid of people, but full of malevolence. Real poser you got there. With the Abbey in control of the entire continent, finding a place like that will be easier said than done. Meanwhile, Inominat's reawakening draws ever closer. We'll have to keep collecting our Therians while we search for a hideout. For now, let's just get to Logris. the water and food you got. Wait your turn, moron! I was drifting out at sea for three days! Almost died out there! we here, poor you! You probably deserved it! Say that again, wise ass! I dare you! Ah, uh, shut up, both of you! No one's getting anything until you pay me what you owe first. Uh, are they gonna be okay? Don't pay them any mind. Sailors are just a short-tempered bunch, that's all. Huh? The hell are you doing? What's going on? They've jacked up the price to dock our ship here. Oh yeah? Some real balls you've got there, buddy. If you lot want to moor here, that's the price you're gonna pay. Look, pirates are a liability to begin with, but calling your crew infamous these days would be putting it lightly. The more wanted you are, the more it's gonna cost to hide you. Capiche? Yeah, hard to argue there. Benwick, just pay the man what he wants. Uh, yes, sir. You're such pushovers. You and the captain both. I knew I could count on you to come through, Eisen. Pleasure doing business with you. Looks like I'm causing you trouble. It comes with the job. Don't sweat it. Some sailors just have longer tempers than others. Noted. Uh, 
All right, everything's all fixed up. Now to polish this ship from top to bottom. You really throw your back into your work, don't you? Why shouldn't I? The Von Eltias, our pride and joy, our weapon. And most importantly, our home. I'm sure you've heard this before, but she's one odd-looking ship. The Von Eltia was built by the Kingdom 12 years ago, using the very best technology available. She was designed for search and seizure operations on the high seas. Apparently, her unusual design comes from an engineer who is familiar with technology from the far continent. But on her maiden voyage, a string of mysterious accidents took the lives of the captain, then the second, and then the third in command. People thought the ship was bad luck. She was about to be scrapped when Captain Eifried came and snatched her for himself. If the ship was bad luck, why did Eifried want it? Well, I'm sure part of it was that he wanted a sturdy ship, capable of reaching the far continent. But when I asked him why, he said, she looks interesting. She's too interesting if you ask me. We've been chased by storms, struck by icebergs, attacked by a giant whale. You name it. Three years ago when the first mate arrived, it all made sense. To think we'd been haunted by a reaper the whole time. Oh, come on. Don't go blaming the captain and the first mate for every bad thing that happens. I bet you're all just frustrated because you're forced to go where they tell you. None of us are forced to be here. We're here because we choose to be here. And we do so fully knowing what sort of men the captain and the first mate are. Anyone can leave the crew whenever they like. We're free pirates, each of us. Here because we want to be. Some of us love adventure. Some are looking to test their fate. And some are just searching for a good place to die. We're a ragtag bunch of rogues, that's for sure. But not a one of us has died carrying regret or resentment. So we're glad to help out you and yours. But you'd best not forget what we stand for. I won't. They're quite the crew, aren't they? Were all those accidents truly caused by your power? Yeah. I've been searching far and wide for a way to lift the Reaper's curse. But when I couldn't find a single thread to follow on this continent, I turned my eyes to the other side of the ocean. And that's why you boarded this ship. And a fine ship she is. The Von Eltia was built from 1,000-year-old wood, you know. Before I found my coin, she was my vessel. But then the accidents came. And then Eifried stole the ship. Did he know you were on board? Definitely. He had pretty solid resonance going for him. Although at first, I think he assumed I was just a dour-eyed lubber worthy of little notice. I suppose being a Reaper tends to take its toll like that. <laughs> no argument there. But still, whether they could see me or not, they didn't act any differently at all. I fought my damn curse with everything I had. And Eifried and his crew fought right along with me. Hell, we even finally made it to the Far Continent. And you didn't find anything there? To help with your curse? I didn't even look. But that's why you went there, isn't it? Eventually, I just got tired of fighting back. The crew, they taught me how to feel alive. And the joy of pursuing my dreams alongside good friends. Just when are we going to be allowed free access through Vortigern? Having to go all the way around it every time is far too inconvenient. If they insist on building a big gate over the sea, the least they can do is let honest folk through it. I get why you're upset, but maybe they just haven't been able to devote the resources to fix it after those savage demons wrecked the place. Look, those demons who attacked Helavis are still on the loose, aren't they? Yep. Standing right here. From what I heard, the demons who wrecked Vortigern were the same ones that killed the High Priest. What? No way. Wait a minute. The High Priest was killed? Yeah. The official story is that he's injured or sick or something. But I heard differently. Then no wonder they haven't had time for Vortigern. I hope the Abbey finds those demons quick. Those monsters need to pay for what they did. Hmm, looks like our infamy is growing by the day. Maybe they've even put a bounty on us by now. They keep embellishing our escapades, though. I'm honestly a little hurt they're calling us monsters. The more they embellish, the easier it is for us to get around. Confusion and panic will only help us.
blood-winged butterflies operate in the Empire's shadows. Not even the Abbey knows their full scope beyond whispers and rumor. And you all have a connection to them, don't you? Dark and interconnected is the Underworld. We've heard voices in the shadows, glimpsed faces behind paper-thin masks. The attack on High Priest Gideon. Was that at their behest? Yeah, the Bloodwings asked us to take him out. We did it in exchange for information that could lead us to Artorias. Information? You would assassinate a man for mere information? Yes. Information on the Shepherd who rules the world. Not a bad deal if you ask me. We just work with them when our interests align. Nothing more. That's the kind of thin justification I'd expect to hear from them, too. But the Bloodwings were acting upon knowledge that the High Priest was harming the people of this city. You're right. The incident with the Nectar was the Church's failing. And it seems that the Bloodwing Butterfly Network goes further and deeper than we had thought. They knew about the barrier at the throne, too. And Velvet's expertise at Dove Mimicry. <clears throat> Would you stop bringing that up? Dove Mimicry? What does that mean? I have no idea. There was a dove near the dock checkpoint. That's all. Huh? Right! It was a black, full-chested dove, wasn't it? Cuckoo! A black, full-chested dove? Is that some sort of underworld code word? Here we are, back in Logris. It was a lot tougher to get in the first time. More funny than tough, if you ask me. Oh, you mean Velvet's little dove act? Coo coo! I'd be careful teasing her if I were you. You know how she can get. Oh, don't act like you didn't enjoy it, too. I'm sure you did, right? Good little boys don't lie to adults, you know. I might have... just a little... Say it like a dove. It was funny. Coo, coo. Zinominot's book so difficult? Grimoire seemed perplexed by it. Yeah. She said it was written in ancient Avarost, a language that uses Impressionist script. I've never heard of Impressionist script. Each character can have many different meanings and readings, depending on the emotion it's expressing and the way it relates to the characters around it. Some modest records on its grammar and structure survive but none that say how to read the emotion the characters express. Grimoire said that you have to recreate the writer's feelings as a sort of starting point in order to read it. I see. And you have a talent for that sort of thing? I guess I do. But a script based on emotions? That's as far removed from modern language as can be. Yeah. It's completely unrelated, apparently. How can it be completely unrelated? After the temperance of Avarost, the entirety of human civilization vanished. The language went with it. Much as a blooming flower loses its petals, the Avaros civilization grew too far and came to its final end. The surviving buildings and ancient tools, the likes of which our technology cannot replicate, were the beginning of that end. In any case, it sounds like deciphering that writing will take quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> 
is the Rangetsu style! So that's the Rangetsu style? No. So then here to here is the Rangetsu style? Just what do you think my style is? You're fighting the Reaper! Don't you! If you want to live, get out of my way. sure is big. Yeah, with historical buildings and artisans and all, there's much of interest here for a boy who loves to learn. Uh-huh. Sightseeing's nice and all, but don't wander off and get lost. Oh yeah, sorry. Don't worry about him. He can take care of himself. I know, I was just saying. You look like travelers. I have some good news for you. The restrictions on travel to the Aldina Plains are going to be lifted soon. The road's opening back up! So, that's the latest word on the streets? Ha! <laughs> I see what you did there. I try to liven things up around here. <laughs> well, ever since Lord Artorius became the Shepherd, demon attacks have gone down. The world's filled with hardships. But perhaps things are starting to go in the right direction. Perhaps. The demons who nearly destroyed Helavis are still skipping about on the loose, though. What? And just the other day, a village near Salt was destroyed by the demon blight. Guess the capital doesn't mind, though. What? Don't worry about it. Your shepherd and the abbey are going to save the world, right? Um, listening to you has kind of gotten me all nervous again. If you hear any other scary stories, let me know, please. Hmm, I've got one with fresh blood, melted bodies. Oh, oh, maybe that tale about the demon doll that comes alive! If you're going to waste time, we're leaving you here. Well, that's enough of this detour, then. Sorry to be such a drag. Wait! That doll one sounded really cool! 